Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Social Flight Live. I'm Jeff Simon. We have a fantastic show for you this evening. Shane Woodson is here, Vice President of Sales and Customer Experience at U Avionics. They are a new supporter of Social Flight, helping to make everything that we do free to you, available, and helping all of general aviation. Uh, and I'm just so thankful to them. And their products are fantastic. I'll tell you, the story story of this company is something we're going to talk about, along with their technology, and uh, I have been a fan for a long time, so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like getting together with, uh, uh, with someone that you follow and just uh, are a huge fan of, and so I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, grateful uh, to have uh, them on board here. Before we get started, a couple things. First of all, uh, we are right now seeing such a great events coming. It is Thanksgiving week, of course, and we wish all of you a wonderful Thanksgiving with you and yours and getting together, which usually means a fair amount of general aviation travel. Uh, GA is such a great tool to get out there and be able to visit with family at times like this and, and avoid the, the big airports and all the other things that can, that can make the holidays so, so challenging. And one of the cool things that we're seeing is if you go to socialflight.com or the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices, you can see that there are a ton of fly-ins and especially breakfast events happening the weekend following Thanksgiving. And so it's really cool to be able to see how much is happening out there. In addition to that, we're uh, doing our fly to win challenge as always. So if you have the Social Flight app on your phone and you just check in at an airport along the way, then you will get uh, automatically entered and points at any airport as you go in the fly to win challenge. And we are giving away a Lightspeed Zulu 3 headset. And so you may be able to go fly, gen uh, have enjoy a general aviation, visit with your family, have Thanksgiving, uh, get out there on the weekend and maybe even win a new headset. And so anything that we can do to get people out there flying uh, is the whole reason that Social Flight exists. In addition to that, of course, you may be listening to this on the podcast. We've launched our new podcast system. And as we approach the new year for anyone who is looking for wings credits, or if you're a mechanic looking for AMT credits, or if you are a mechanic with inspection authorization looking to renew your IA, well, we've got all of that inside Social Flight. There's a button for our FAA learning system, and there are tons of videos and things that you can do from the comfort of your home to get those WINGS credits, to get AMT awards, or be able to renew your IA by getting the credits that you need for uh, that education. And we even print out FAA certified certificates that, um, that help do that. So all of that free and available through Social Flight, and it's because of companies like U Avionics. And so I'd like to uh, begin by talking about them a little bit. U Avionics is one of the greatest modern success stories in general aviation. By leveraging cutting edge miniaturized solutions they, that were originally developed for the unmanned and the drone market, U Avionics has literally disrupted the avionics industry. Um, and they've done that by using these lightweight ADSB uh, products, including transponders now, and also displays. And the proof is in their market share. To date, there have been over 55,000 UAVionics products that have been sold that go into the panels and, and around general aviation aircraft. That doesn't even include their portables. And uh, over 25,000 tail beacons alone have been sold in that. So. That is a testament. When you look at numbers like that, that's an incredible testament to what this company has been able to accomplish. And it benefits all of us. Now, uh, as the Vice President of Sales and Customer Experience as, at UAVionics, Shane Woodson is on the front lines of the company. He's working to meet the, meet the needs of both the aircraft owners and the maintenance shops together. Shane is a pilot and an aircraft owner and his 1968 Cessna 172, you can see in many of their ads, I am absolutely thrilled to call Shane, not just a, a professional person that I know, but also a friend. He is a truly, truly wonderful individual. And uh, I hope you'll help me welcome here, him here to Social Flight Live tonight. Please welcome Shane Woodson. How are you doing, Shane? I'm great. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Glad to be <laughs> well, here. Uh, listen, thank you so much for everything you do to support all of general aviation, now to support Social Flight as well. 
and for these products that uh, we're going to talk about. But uh, I mean, your technology has been truly revolutionary. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been an exciting, exciting time here at UAvionics. The, the, what we've seen from you know from day one. Um, at this point, it's back over seven years, back in 2015 when things started, has just been, um, as you mentioned um, in your very kind introduction, it's been a, you know, a huge success story, so. That, the, you just slid in there since 2015, and I just wanna say, okay, so I came out of the avionics in, industry. I mean, I, I worked at a number of companies there and, and at one point was director of strategic marketing over at Honeywell's Aerospace Group. And we think of certification efforts as <laughs> taking you know, three years, five years sometimes to certify a single product. Your company has only been doing this for seven years and you're talking about 55,000 products in the market. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, what's actually interesting about that is the you know twenty it was it was the end of 2015 when things really started. Um, company, as you mentioned, started with the unmanned kind of the UAS or the the, the drone industry, if you will, seeing the need for ADSB. Um, it's going to hit this marketplace um, and hit our airspaces, and so most everybody in the company, uh, being you know pilots, whether um, rotorcraft pilots, fixed wing, you know. Uh, product pilots and so forth like that, you know, we saw a need and, you know, the company started, like say at the end of 2015 um, and very quickly on, there was a uh, a need to kind of address the ADSB market here in the United States for private pilots. And, uh, you know, so really the first certified product between that 2015 or really call it the first of 2016, you know, Within the first year and a half, that's when the first certification came through. So, I mean, you're talking three, four years for certification and, and we're hitting, you know, TSOs in a matter of, I mean, we started 2017, um, started shipping some of these products. And so it was a very fast certification window. And now the company's got, uh, goodness, um, I think we're pushing uh, 10, 12 TSOs and um, and STCs out there right now in very short order. Wow, that that's amazing. Um, it, be before we get too deep into the actual products, I, I want to talk about you, obviously, as, as a friend and someone I have a great deal of respect for. Um, I, I love your story of kind of growing up through aviation because you have is a company of pilots. Uh, tell us a little bit about about yours, because you got you got started really early, right? Yeah, I mean it, it, it's it's kind of ironic because the company started the UAVionics started kind of in the in the drone products to address that you know protecting the airspace that we as pilots fly in nowadays. But but my start of, and love of aviation started all the way back when believe this or not, I was about eight years old flying with my dad remote control or radio control airplanes and um, and so we flew radio control airplanes up until i was about 12 13 years old and then my dad got his license and it's literally one of those stories where it's like you grew out of the you know little boy you know little man's toys and went up to you know big boys toys and so we went from flying you know radio controlled gas powered aircraft you know with six foot wingspans um to you know in very short order uh flying uh, my the first plane i learned to fly was a, a 1963 152 um and and uh i got my student ticket when i was tw 15 years old um i literally got my license less than a year later um and then flew that for several years and then we upgraded and moved. I'm six foot six now, so you can imagine me in a in a 150 is a little tight. So we were able to upgrade to a you know a 172, um, and I've been flying that set, that 68 172 now. Um, we've had that for a, going on close to 15 to 17 years, roughly. But I've yeah I've been flying fixed wing um, single engine for you know 35 years now. Wow. And so, and your son Zane is uh, uh, is getting started as he, well. Yeah, he's actually uh, he's a he's a, a website developer, graphic designer, and um, 
you know, really tied into the technology thing. And he's recently gotten a little passion for, he's always gone flying with us um, all through the years, but, you know, um, there's just something about, you know, flying, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, as he's getting a little bit older and, you know, he, he's a, he's a young man now. So there's that passion and that kind of desire to, to get his license. So he started ground school kind of going through that. And, um, what's really kind of cool is the company has come, you know, come out and said, listen, if you want to get your license, you know, for people in the company and stuff like that, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get behind them on that. So they're helping him on the the ground school and, and move towards, you know, flying. And so, yeah, it's a, it's an exciting time. And, you know, it, it kind of goes full circle because, you know, I was flying with my, with my dad and he, my son's always been flying with me, but now it's, you know, there's that chance for it kind of changing, um, you know, pilot, you know, pilot and pilot. So it's pretty cool. I, I can only imagine. I, and, and, and you can, you can usually see in that progression, how you get very attached to the aircraft too. You want to see it kind of stay in the family, pass down to your kids, that kind of thing. It, it is. We'll see. Yeah, and that's one of the things with the 172. I mean, that was kind of the 150, you know, the 63, you know, 152, and then the this 68, 172 has kind of been a, a passion project of, of me and my dad over the years. And he recently, you know, well, I'll say recently, going seven years ago, he basically, he passed away. And so now that plane, was handed to me and and um yeah so it's kind of one of those things where you it'd be nice to kind of hand it on or or at least stay in the family and keep flying so i don't know if we're doing that or if we're gonna go you know experimental lights for those those new kind of bush planes and uh you know off runway that's kind of exciting <laughs> so um, I, like, I seem to be going lower and slower and uh my my son he's kind of looking at hey uh, smaller and faster <laughs> so uh, something to do with age jeff <laughs> i i'm with you I, I i get that um no no question about it so yeah. um now and and as you mentioned, I mean, I think you told me at one point that UAvionics is about eighty to ninety percent of the people there are pilots. Well, at the very beginning, it was um, so it, probably for the first three to four years, I would say a good uh, a very large majority of the people um, are are pilots and and in the leadership and really in the kind of the sales, um, you know marketing and business development you know the majority of the product i should say majority of the the categories yeah there's a lot of pilots in the company um we've grown a lot over this you know over the past uh since 2019 so that percentage has dropped a little bit obviously over the the you know the few years since we've really um exploded in growth but um yeah there's still a, a you know a lot of as we grow, we've got more and more, um, you know, remote pilots that are flying and certified to fly, you know, the unmanned or uncrewed vehicles and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's there's definitely a connection, a pilot connection with, you know, with this industry uh, and, and aviation. That's so, so cool. So I want to uh, understand both where the the products kind of came from as well as where they are. But of course, for, for a lot of people tuned in tonight, they want to understand what's next. And we will definitely be getting to that. Um, and so it all starts with this concept of, of miniaturization. And and the first product, which I'll I'll show here while I'm talking about it, uh, being really the, the one that kind of took over the world of the Sky Beacon. Um, help me understand how for for decades and decades, I I know what it, you know uh, it it takes for this technology, and it's usually big stuff. Uh, yeah. And how how did you wind up being able to package this in something so small that it could wind up being a navlite? Well, so yeah, one of the things we were looking at when, you know, this was about year one of my time, maybe six months into the time with the company and we were looking at it, so, you know, seeing this, obviously the 2020 mandate coming along. And I mean, it's, as you mentioned, a lot of industry, you know, a lot of the, the manufacturers out there are building ADSB and kind of the traditional form factor. And along with that comes a, you know, a multi-pound box 
a lot of additional wiring, um, and then a lot of a lot of that additional wiring turns into complexity of it costs a lot of money labor wise to have you know these pieces of equipment fitted into an airplane, and so you know UAvionics is always kind of um, driven towards disrupting a market and and being a differentiator out there. And so what we tried to look at is, you know, we had a product at that time when that came out of, it's called Echo UAT and it's a small traditional, you know, ADSB box that's, it's the size of your wallet, not the size of your shoe box, you know? Um, and so it's a very small product, but it didn't really address the the install factor. And so, you know, we're looking at it like, the average price and the stuff out there you know, you're talking about two three four thousand dollars for the hardware and then you've got to look at the installation and that's where it really impacts the market and so what we wanted to look at is uh, you know what can we do to take this unmanned you know kind of miniaturization that we've done and repurpose somewhere on the plane that makes and essentially takes the, the the labor installation factor out of the equation. And that's when we came up and it's like, you know, tail beacon and sky beacon, sky beacon would be in the first one that we went after. So there would be a, you know, a, a red ADSB outlight and then there would be a, a green, um, you know, which we do a sky sensor and so forth like that. And so we wanted to address that and repurpose that nav light as a, a product where you get a, an LED upgrade, but it's also, it's already a power out there and there's no wiring involved it. So, you know, there's your ADSB transmitter, a nav light, you know, and there's literally, it can be done in 15 minutes to install it. Um, it's, there's next to no time. It takes longer to program the app up, um, download the app and program it than it probably does to actually install it. But, uh, you know, mileage kind of varies where you have it installed so that was the key driver is is how do we eliminate that installation factor and we launched sky beacon in you know in um i mean we launched it for experimental in the early part of 2017 if i'm not mistaken and then in very short order after that we got it certified started shipping it um and that was our first certification project or product that hit the market um, in the in the unman or I'm sorry in the general aviation market, then shortly after that, which will be one in one of your other slides, is is the tail beacon, and um, that's really been you know a, a, an Im immensely successful product as well. So, so the, the there's a couple things that 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 really seem to be making this possible. Well, one of the first things I remember when you first came out with this was this idea of kind of uh, empathizing with the market that. We wouldn't want to force people to get rid of their transponders. Uh, we yeah. wanted to add ADSB on top of transponders. That was one thing. And then the then the question of, well, how do you do that? How do you have ADSB that's in sync with what uh, a, an older transponder might be doing or an existing transponder might be doing? Right. And that seems to be one of the the kind of linchpins of the company. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, and it, I mean, it, to, to talk a little bit about that, I mean, if we had gone to a show and had heard it, and I've mentioned it to you several times, if we heard it one time, we heard it thousands of times at, you know, Sun and Fun and Oshkosh, and it's like, listen, if I've got to replace my transponder and spend four or five, six thousand dollars plus labor to, you know, to put this in the plane, and at times, you know, some of that time, you know, hits upwards of eight thousand dollars for hardware and installation. You know, pilots were saying, listen, this mandate's going to drive me out of aviation. And, you know, we're aircraft, we're pilots, we're aircraft owners, so we know what those costs are too. And so there was a, there was a very, you know, it was a kind of a hard moment to come through and say, listen, we've got to come up with something like this um, to not only, you know, help the industry, but help all of these pilots that are trying to equip. And, you know, so that's what we were looking at. And, you know, when you don't have to replace the transponder, because let's face it, there's a lot of transponders out there in the market that, you know, they're older, but they're still working perfectly fine. And so that's what we did. What we actually patented the technology called a power transcoder. And I think this is what you're kind of mentioning. And so what it's doing is it basically uses that power wire um, that transponder back feeds electrical noise into that, you know, uh, you know, into that aircraft electronic system. And so, you know, we basically listen to that noise um, 
through that power wire connection um, before it gets to any kind of filtering and stuff like that. And then you can, there's a lot of information in there. I mean, it's not just squat code and pressure altitude and stuff like that. There's other information. If you know what you're listening for, you can grab it. And so we patented the, the technology of this power transcoder to listen to and, and decode the squawk code, um, flight ID, and that pressure altitude from that aircraft's electrical system. And so um, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I, I've seen it, you know, from day one, and it's, uh, it's uh, the engineers that we have at this company are just mind-blowing. The velocity at what they work at and how they can create, I mean, back to when I first started, I mean, I've seen products start, and literally over the course of a weekend, we had a prototype spun up and and actually a working prototype over you know a weekend to you know maybe three days it, it's just i've never seen anything like it and so that's, um yeah that is a that is amazing i mean a absolutely and and it's also fascinating again that you can get so much data for what's happening in the aircraft over the power wire that you can yeah. you can see everything happening through just noise in the system i think a lot of people think that that you're kind of just sniffing the transponder's own output through an antenna and hearing it through an antenna. But the fact you're bringing it in through the power wire and you can kind of yeah. see everything happening there is remarkable. Yeah, it's uh, it, like I say, it's, it, it is an interesting situation there. And uh, it, um, again, I'm not an engineer. I won't uh, completely exp you know, understand how it works, but uh, I I've seen it work. Uh, if it doesn't share that, that common power connection, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So, now but, you've got another product here I also want to show here, which I think fewer people are aware of, and that's the Sky Sensor for the other yes. side of it. Because this, you know, this is ADSB out that we're talking about in general with the, the tail beacon and the sky beacon and making Correct. someone compliant with an existing transponder. But most of those people want the benefits of UAT uh, tra uh, ADSB in for traffic and weather. And a lot of people are doing that with portables. Tell me about right. the sky sensor. Yeah, so, you know, Sky Sensor, really, initially, we started as kind of like a sky light, which was just a nav light, and um, uh, there's been, you know, some delays on that product, um, you know, and so what we've recently looked at is to look at Sky Sensor, and and really, there's a, there's a huge safety benefit to having ADS-B in on the wingtip, because there's no better real estate than having that ADSB receiver and antenna out there on the end of the wing or you know somewhere outside yeah. the cockpit because in a typical Cessna Piper you know you've got an aluminum cage that you're sitting in and that you know you can you can develop them for optimal you know antenna reception but you can't beat it out there on the wingtip because it's totally unobstructed and so. You know, and, and no wires inside the cockpit, nothing to deal with inside from all these portables and battery issues or anything like that. Yeah, it, perfect. Exactly. Because with this, you turn your nav lights on, your ADS-B out comes on, your ADS-B in comes on. And you don't have to worry about battery. You don't have to worry about, you know, it, it just Wi-Fi is back into the cockpit, connects to your, you know, your iPad or your Android, whatever piece of equipment you're using in EFB. It uses standard GDL90. Now it's currently in a experimental um, or, or non-certified, but there are several paths that we have hundreds and hundreds of aircraft owners who are getting them installed through either, you know, um, field approvals or AC 23-27, which is vintage aircraft, and they're doing them as you know A and P logbook entries and mm -hmm. so forth like that. And I mean, we are going down the certification road on that. We actually hope to have this certified and be shipping in the early portion of uh, 2023. Um, and so, you know, at this point, you've got a full LED matching nav light for, you know, your your red and green nav lights, and you've got a matching pair. And so it's a little late to the party. Um, we've been, you know, we've been kind of covered up with ADS-B mandate with the tail beacon, the tail beacon X and, and, the, you know, and so we've kind of 
coming through the what the past couple of years have been in the environment that we've been in, it's kind of come back and looked at it and said, hey, you know, we need to kind of circle back on this and um, put some put some really effort, you know, back into this and get it certified. So you'll see this come to fruition in, in very short order. It it seems to me that this this is actually a really a really good product in its evolution in that I mean you don't even have to necessarily have a UAVionics uh, a transponder or tail beacon or any of these things uh, in order to make use of this. This is something that anyone who has an aircraft that is equipped for ADSB out but does not actually have as part of their certified equipment an ADSB in or a Wi-Fi output for their ADSB in. It seems like this is the same thing. S slap this on with, you know, replacing your uh, your existing light, and sheesh, you uh, you've you've got ADSB in now for anyone's portable. Yeah, I mean it's 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 live traffic and live weather, no subscription, free, and you've got a huge benefit of safety there. And so you know we're we're pretty passionate about it, about you know you know bringing this out um, and 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 filling that that need. Obviously, we we do a, a very large business in the portables um, with the Century uh, that you know our partnership with Four Flight, we make that for them, and so there's a tremendous number of you know, of uh, um, portables out there, but some people are looking for this install, you know, kind of an installed, just park it on the wingtip and they don't have to, they don't have to worry about wires or, you know, cockpit management or anything like that. So. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. And I want to show before uh, we move on from that, that, you know, the, the tail beacon for that, the, the standard yeah. tail beacon with UAT um, that uh, that's also part of that uh, before we move on. Um, the next thing, you know, I think the the you know, one thing I think it's important for people to understand is these are of course UAT uh, devices that we've talked about so far. Correct. And um and and so tell us a little bit about to remind people what the reasons are to choose a UAT versus a 1090 ADSB uh, uh, device and why as we move on we we'll get to Tailbeacon X and. And we can talk about, uh, you know, reasons people may even want to upgrade uh, or switch depending on their flying to 1090. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the 978 UAT product like the Sky Beacon, Tail Beacon and so far like that was really driven to meet the U.S. mandate. That's really the country that, I mean, the U.S. is really the country that, you know, supports and stands behind the 978 UAT. It's lower power. Um, it works with an existing transponder. Um, and it supports what's called anonymous mode. And I don't know, you know, when we're at shows and stuff talking to people, a lot of people really, you know, um, get behind and like the fact that there is this anonymous mode. And so, uh, you know, these UAT products, if you're squawking 1200 um, and your VFR, you know, and you have anonymous mode, anonymous mode enabled, uh, it will actually send 1200 in VFR for your you know, aircraft identification and ICAO. So it is not right. transmitting your end number and stuff like that. So there's been a lot of people who have really wanted to get behind um, and, and have that anonymous um, mode in there. Um, but the big driving one is that, it, you know, UAT works with your existing transponder and it's the lowest cost of entry and compliance with this, you know, 2020 mandate. And so yeah. we, that was the biggest, kind of the, the fastest way to, to you know, really to, to save as many of these aircraft fly in um, and, and help pilots, the pilot community equip with the lowest kind of, I like to call it minimally invasive ADS-B because it's kind of the, you know, it, it's the least impactful to the plane. It's the lowest downtime and it's the lowest cost of labor to, to install, you know? And so, you know, we knew that once the 2020 mandate was kind of, you know, behind us and we're moving on, you know, other countries, they're going, I mean, it's, if you're flying over 18,000 feet, you're flying into Canada, Mexico, or, or you're flying internationally, you're going to need MODES and 1090 extended squitter. And so that's, you know, we quickly started moving towards that. And that's really where we started in our, in our unmanned, the unmanned side was, you know, 1090 and MODES, but, you know, that's, wasn't the easiest way to do it through, you know, for the U.S. market. Um, and so, you know, where we are now uh, is with our Tail Beacon X. Um, and that Tail Beacon X, it's a full 250-watt MODES transponder, ADS-B out. 
and it meets these uh, you know based you know these terrestrial and space based ADSB systems. So you know where the company's position now is. You know we've we've addressed kind of the U.S. mandate, and now we're addressing the rest of the world um, in a product solution. And so you see there, yeah, Tail Beacon X. That's on the tail cone of our company 182, um, and it, it, that's just been a phenomenal piece of equipment. Um, the technology in there is. It's it's staggering what that piece of equipment can do, um, and so we're really we we got essentially Nav Canada kind of re and Transport Canada kind of rewrote the what they call diversity regulation, and so diversity typically says you have to transmit on the higher antenna and transmit on a lower antenna, so you're alternating, uh, so you can reach both the terrestrial and the space base. But Tail Beacon X was actually designed and patented in a way that it it's talking to the satellites and the ground based it's it's kind of deemed as a antenna located in an appropriate manner where it speaks to the satellites and to the ground stations at the same time and so it it performs to that space based or diversity performance but it's actually not a technically a diversity transponder it's it it's performing um, you know, when talking to those two, uh, you know, equivalently, but it's it's not switching from antenna to antenna. Wow, that's and, and so you know, the first thing I think that is so remarkable about the Tail Beacon X is that it is a transponder. Yeah, <laughs> that this thing that that was what like eight pounds and fit in a rack, and that most people are used to reaching over and having a bunch of dials on and, and a bunch of buttons. Is that, I mean, that's it. I mean, and so what you're seeing behind that, you know, basically from there behind, you've only got about two inches of transponder. And I mean, it's, it's a very tiny transponder that's back there and it's 250 Watts. Um, and it's, what's even more amazing is it runs on, I mean, it's, it's one to three Watts is kind of its, its power range. Um, so it's, with a nav light, with the transponder and everything, you're still a fraction of what just the traditional incandescent bulb is back there. That's, it, I mean, let's, let me just think about that for a minute because, I mean, my, my mind went to like, okay, what's that the equivalent of? Like the first cell phones that was like a brick and then now <laughs> you're down to a little thing. Like, no, it actually isn't equivalent to that because I'd have to hold up an entire transponder to my head if it's, I want it to be the equivalent of what you've done and what you've done is smaller than a cell phone, yeah. how on earth did you guys manage to do this? That's, yeah. that's crazy. It's funny, you called it, you, it's funny you said that with the, with the, with the cell phone because our, our, our uh, CEO and founder, Paul Beard, that's one of the things when he's talking about when he sees these different products out there and, and we're looking at really kind of disrupting it. It's like a, a bag phone, you know, cause it's like, you think about the early cell phones and they weren't, they weren't, you held them in your hand. They were actually bags of, you know, a bag of phone that you put into your car and stuff. And it's, you know, and here we are with like the sleekest little, you know, cell phone that you can even imagine, you know? And um, yeah, it, but the technology behind it where, you know, it's, it's a 250 Watts, but it's, you know, it's a one millisecond burst. So it's basically consuming that power and, and then, you know, burst in that transmission um, every second. And so, yeah, it's, there's a lot of, uh, Technology that's inside there is just it's uh it's far above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> that's and understanding. That's, <laughs> and and so all this comes together now because you got to control. Once you got a transponder, yeah. you've got to be able to control it. So this all comes together now when you start talking about your displays. And Correct. um so let's talk about AV30 for a minute. Gotcha. So yeah, so with with Tail Beacon X, um, since it is the transponder, you've got to have a way to control it. And so you know, it's it's kind of like everything else out there that it's a remote transponder. So you're going to need a way to train, you know, to change the squawk or ident and so forth like that. So you know, it is actually in the experimental side of it, you can you can use it with like the um, you know, the MGL, the advanced flight systems, um, Dynon, different, you know, EFIS models. We we actually make a open 
Uh, it's a UCP protocol to control the tail beacon at X, and, and it's open to any of the developers or any of the, you know, um, EFIS manufacturers that are, you know, panel displays that want to take and use the control. And so we're working with many of these guys to, to get those things up and running. But but we we had back in 20, was it 2020, we acquired Aerovonics. And so, you know, we had this, I mean, we, we've got the AV30 and it's prime candidate to be the control head for, you know, Tail Beacon X. And so that's where Tail Beacon X and AV30 bundle comes into a, a huge you know factor because you've got, you know, AV30 is, you know, it's now certified as your, you know, your attitude indicator, your primary directional gyro, a primary slip. And then you've got like 15 additional functions like angle of attack, vertical speed, airspeed, altitude, and so forth like that. But one of the features that's inside there is tail beacon X control. And it's Ooh. a page that's inside there that you can access from either mode to change the squawk and ident. Wow, you know, uh, you, you mentioned, you touched on something there that, that I, I wanna go back to because anyone who knows me from all of my, you know, decades in the avionics industry, I am a huge fan of what's called a, a federated panel, you know, which I think of as a best of breed panel where you build your panel choosing what you want as your primary display, what you want as your radio, what you want as your navigator, and you choose the best. What company is the best? And and by doing that, you inevitably wind up with a group of companies that are incentivized to do two things. They're incentivized to work together, yeah. which is what you talked about, where you, you're opening up your interface to control the Tail Beacon X to all these different manufacturers, even if they happen to be taking a place in the panel that perhaps an AV30 could. Um, sure. And you also are always innovating in it. And so people tend to get new software rollouts or updates or new things coming or new products that fit together and add on to what you have. Um, all because you kind of picked a group that's this whole class of companies that's all, all working together. Um, right. instead of being tied. Tell me a little bit what, what, what your approach has been to that. Well, so, I mean, you know, with, with Tail Beacon X, I mean, obviously at $2,500 for a, a mode S transponder that's 1090 that meets the space based you know, performance requirements. And there's, there's a handful of com countries that have that right now, but there, you know, there's more coming. And so having a, you know, a $2,500 transponder, Nobody's going to compete with us in that industry, in that market. And so, you know, we want to take and have as, you know, we want to open it up so that as many displays out there as they desire can connect and work with Tail Beacon X. Because at the end of the day, when, when companies with our technology and our engineering work with other companies in the industry that have, you know, the engineering and, and maybe they have, I mean, so if you look at AV30 and, and our AV20, which AV30 is behind me on the little panel and you've showed some pictures of it, you know, we're going after the two inch and the three inch holes in the panel. You know, we don't have anything that's going after a typical glass, you know, um, eight inch or seven inch or, you know, larger 10 inch or so forth like that panel. We don't, we're, we're not, stepping into that market right now. Um, so we see AV30 as a complement to many of these, you know, um, you know, EFIS manufacturers and, and you know, multifunction display manufacturers. And so working together helps bring a solution, like you'd said, bring a solution to the industry that, that, that they get the kind of the best of the best. And again, we know that Tail Beacon X is a, is a, it's a, home run solution that many of these you know companies can utilize and, and help their customer base out likewise ab30 then becomes a perfect backup you know display for some of those larger panels i mean in in prime example like an avidine or so forth like that i mean you you put a panel display in there and you want to have a backup display well right there at that picture you're showing AB30 gives you airspeed altitude. It gives you, you know, a full, you know, artificial horizon with a slip. It, it's basically your six pack in a backup instrument. Yeah. So. 
It, it's it, and for people who don't necessarily uh, know a lot about diversity, it, it's really important in in being able to talk both you know with antennas that point both up and down, because it, especially if you're in the northern kind of parts of the United States, like where we are, um, with that mandate coming for Canada, if you want to fly into Canada, you need to do it. And right. with many other uh, transponders, when you look at adding diversity and what it costs once once the, it's enabled, whether that be the software enablement or something else, you can have a transponder that costs ten thousand yeah. dollars just easily, just, just to do that one function and make it legal for you to to be able to fly in Canada. So that's a really big deal. It um, is. In, in addition, I want to show while we have this up here that you guys have done some fun stuff with it because. You even have options where you can do things like uh, this vintage look. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which I get, a, I get a real kick out of that. I like the vintage look. But of course, one of the most important things is that it's it does it, it, it can instantly change over and you can use it also as a DG or an HSI, GPS nav, et cetera. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so that's one of the key differentiators of AV30 is, is you know, many of our competitor products, when you buy one of the products, I mean, it's you're buying it as either a, an attitude indicator or a directional gyro, and it's kind of set to that function. And so you, you spend, you know, more than what the AV30 does, and you kind of get a defined, you know, feature set for that instrument. AV30 is, I mean, whether you have it boot up in the um, attitude indicator page or the directional indicator page, um, it's literally a long press of that center push set button um, and you can toggle between them. Um, now in a certified installation, the FAA requires you to have, it's kind of a one for one. So if you're putting it in as a primary, you, you, you can't put, you know, just like you can't with other instruments, you, you have to put, you know, an AV30 in for, uh, an attitude indicator and you've got to put an AV30 in for your directional indicator. You can't put one in and have it take it all. Now you can in the experimental world, it can become essentially your whole six pack in an experimental aircraft, but you know, what's nice about it is, is like say the AV30, you're buying one and if you drop two of them in your panel kind of on top of each other, you know, if you, you really can, you can almost flip flop them and change the function without even moving the instrument because it's literally done in the software and the setup. Mm. So, and that's and something that's important. If you're not using it, like we get a lot of customers, they put, they put two AV30s in, one for the AI, one for the DG, so that they can remove their um, attitude. In, I'm sorry, they can remove their vacuum pump. Um, a lot of guys are, and, and pilots are doing that, aircraft owners. But there's a lot too with the Tail Beacon X and with our new AV Link, which is a little Wi Fi module that plugs into the back of it. Um, that allows them to put one additional instrument in there as maybe a, a third kind of supplemental unit. And that unit can be unlocked and essentially you can toggle it back and forth and, and the, the attitude, the directional gyro, and it, that particular page that you're looking at right there, um, if you look at that center AB30 there, you'll see it's got your full attitude indicator. You've got a, a heading at the top. You've actually got a flat card DG at the very top of the arc. And it's an, you know, an artificial horizon. So, I mean, you have everything there, which you can't really get with a lot of these other instruments. Um, and you'll notice in our displays, we don't do a lot of kind of heading and speed tapes and stuff like that. We really maximize that data, those data fields to give them the, the best visibility, put as much information on the screen, but it'd be useful information. So, yeah. And then of course, if you want to control it, this allows, this yeah, yeah. allows you to see the squat code there and the, that your mode is in altitude, your ident, et cetera, it's all right there for you. Yeah, and those buttons are hot, those are kind of what they call soft buttons. So you'll see down there the ident button. Um, when you hit the center knob, that push set, uh, that's where your squat code will kind of pop up underneath where that um, slip indicator is. And then you can change the squawk while, we, while you're doing that you know, that right button that says AI above right next to the 100% battery meter, it goes to show VFR. So you have a shortcut back to a VFR. And then mm. the ident changes over to done, which once you change your squawk, it 
triggers and sets it back into the squat code. So, you know, we use dynamic buttons and soft buttons and menus that, you know, they change whatever kind of what function you're working in. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, modern day technology and these, you know, electric displays. Well, one of the things I want to talk about also here is I've got a soft spot for your your AV20. Uh, Yeah. I love the AV30, and I know that uh, the the boys in building the Mustang are huge fans uh, of that because that's their primary. In in I'm going to say the back, but they think they're going to be in the front the whole time. But um, yeah. <laughs> but the AV20 I tuned in on because for because quite frankly of the the G meter fact that it does, um, which is probably one of the smallest features that may come to mind. But for us with the with the Mustang behind me you just look at what it's going to cost to go buy a G meter and you might as well go buy this. And then all of a sudden you've got everything in this, in this, like more than you could ever imagine in this little box. So tell me about this one. Yeah. So AB 20 is uh, so in a transponder control page that you see right there, AB 20 is not certified um, to be a control head for certified aircraft. I'll just kind of get that out of the way. It can be used. There's an AB 20 E, which can be used to, like, for instance, in the Mustang that you're building, I mean, you could use AB 20 E with the tail beacon X for your control head, and you would have that large transponder display. It's a two inch screen, but you get the clock function. It's a, you know, it's a VFR approved clock for VFR and IFR operations. It's got your clock. It's got your timers. It's got an angle of attack, probeless angle of attack in there. And like you were mentioning, it's got a G meter, both numerical and graphical. Um, it even has a kind of a minimum and a peak, which you may, you may not have a picture of that, but it's got a minimum and peak. Um, yeah. So that's, kind of like what that is has your low and your high but the g meter also has the same kind of visual like that and so there's a lot of functions there um you know like say you there that's one right there that a lot of people like that actually gives you the core kind of correlation of your g load on the left and your angle of attack on your right um that's pretty cool the idea of 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 having that and even in, in a certified aircraft you know people someone was asking me just the other day about uh, you know, G loading and what the importance is. And what they said to me is, well, I don't plan on doing a lot of yanking, banking or anything like that. And I said, I had to explain to them, that's not where the load limits generally are on your aircraft. They're not assuming that people are going out there and taking their Cessna and trying to like pull G's in it. The, the load limits of your aircraft happen when you get a microburst or when you fly near a storm, you get, or you, when you hit a lot of turbulence, when something happens that rocks you in the cockpit and you need to understand what just happened and what G forces was the aircraft just uh, exposed to. Sure. And this tracks that. If you wanted to know what, what happened in that challenging situation or what kind of Gs you just experienced when you weren't intending on it, this right. is recording that. It, it does. So it gives you kind of that that minimum and that peak G um, load factor. And so you can reset it at the end of it. It's kind of like, you know, in in auto sports, the, the tachometer that kind of has what the, the max RPM is, it's kind of got that telltale button in there. But it's, you, you know, on the one page that you're not showing there, that's kind of, it had that kind of graphical, you know, G load. And at the bottom, like I say, it's got that minimum and that peak. Kind of um, like what AOA does. It's like that when only it's just, it doesn't have, that's the AOA. It looks just right. like that, except it's a G. And so, but yeah, it's, you know, that's for 895 tail, you know, the AB20 is, it's a remarkable piece of equipment and, and just great value. It, it takes a little bit of the little brother backseat to what AB30 is because that's our flagship product. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, that's where most of the marketing goes. Um, but AB20, it's, uh, you know, I've got two AB30s and an AB20 in my 172 and I can't imagine flying without the AB20 myself, too. It, which basically means that at any given time, you could have three attitude displays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're right. Technically, technically four, because my plane still has the one of the attitude indicators, the original attitude indicator in it. So I, I have a couple extra spots in there. So yeah, it's I've got I could have technically four. <laughs> I like redundancy. <laughs> I also want to show real quick how small and light these things are. Yeah. Uh, you know, you still have to pump pedostatic in there, but that is, that's remarkable. 
It's about two inches th deep is about all it is. And the back portion on that was the battery. So, you know, speaking to that, both the AV20 and the AV30, they have internal backup batteries um, built into them. And they're pretty simple and easy user replaceable if they did need to be replaced. But I mean, we've got thousands upon thousands of them in the field and I, I can't count on my hand the number of batteries that we've actually replaced. Wow, that's... Uh... Yeah. That that's pretty impressive. So, tell me what's what's coming next for for the company. Well, the first the first thing I want to talk about is you've got accessories you started to come out with. I'll call it options, accessories, yeah. add-ons to the AV, AV Link and AV Mag. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so AV Link is a, um, a Wi-Fi module that connects. It basically plugs right into the back of the AV30. You know, it essentially. This right here, it's it's got a, a 15 pin on one side and it's got the opposing gender feet, uh, plug on the other side. And so it literally, you take AB30 and you unplug the harness, you plug AB link in and you plug the harness back in. There's no wiring involved. And so what it does is it allows that AB30 to, to receive over the air kind of Wi-Fi updates of software and firmware, but it also will connect to your um, an ADSB receiver, you know, Sky Sensor we talked about early. It'll talk, you know, to the um, uh, Sentry or any kind of open GDL90 ADSB receiver, and it will receive that GPS, um, you know, track data as well as the uh, the traffic information. So um, the AV30 now has in the experimental side, it's got it. It's also it can be engaged into the It'll be engaged into the certified side for the AV30C, but it'll give you a traffic display. Um, and then there's a lot of kind of EFB, um, call it four flight integration that's, you know, in the works on things like that. So that, you know, the idea behind it is that the EFBs have access to the data that's inside AV30. Um, and then we would also be able to get, for instance, information from the flight plan information and show you know, that, you know, GPS, HSI, or that route line on the screen. But there's a huge benefit there that a lot of people don't realize. And, you know, when you're looking at traffic on an iPad, you're looking at typically pressure altitude compared to GPS altitude on the device. And so if we can, through AV Link, share that pedostatic data, you're getting real airspeed and real pressure altitude into that device. And that really makes the panel, the portable become an extension of the panel. And now you can compare pressure altitude to pressure altitude and have a, a, a real apples to apples, um, you know, relative altitude on traffic, yeah. which well, is you huge. Could be doing density altitude calculations. You could be doing true airspeed calculations, all sorts of things on, so, on a portable. Yeah, there's a lot of information that can be. Um, automatically, yeah, with no manual exactly. inputs. Yeah. Wow. So, and so what about the AV Mag? I'm sorry. What about the AV Mag? So AV Mag is um, the external magnetometer. So something that we had a lot of interest in is, is you know, AV30 is certified as a non-slaved DG. So you do have to get in and set it to, you know, compass heading um, and set it to or runway heading when you, you know, for an initial setting. A lot of people want it to essentially be more of your digital compass. So when you just get in, um, it, it knows exactly the direction it's pointing. And so, you know, we had a lot of interest for an external magnetometer. So that's what AV Mag is. It's a very simple and easy, um, you know, I've kind of got my little corner of trick things. And so you can see it. This is a full external magnetometer, little, small, tiny thing that takes no space. Um, just a couple wires. Now it needs to go out in the wing or wing tip or somewhere away from ferrous metals. Um, but you know, that will do a couple things. So it becomes your, you know, digital, you know, magnetometer. So it gives a, uh, you know, an external magnetometer, um, highly precise heading there. But if we, if you like, for instance, what's coming in the experimental side next is, is if you have a GPS connected, whether it be Tail Beacon X or one of these portables, or we're getting it in through a panel GPS, like an RS-232 feed into the, um, the AV-30. If you have the GPS feed and the AV mag, 
then what we'll be able to do in this next software update is we'll be able to show you wind speed and direction um, because you have a high precise ground track and you have a highly precise um, you know, magnetic heading track. And so once we have that, we'll give you wind speed and direction. Wow. And, that's and you get that that's uh, in development now. With, and that, that comes with the AV mag allowing that to be possible then. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, just, just a couple of wires that goes into the, the back of the AV30? It is. Yeah. There's actually three wires. So there's basically a, there's a, um, you've got a, a essentially a, a power, a power return and then a, a ground. So you're, it's only, there's three wires to connect it. Wow. That is so, so, so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. And so that, that's the first two, and those are in certification. So we've already released AV Mag and AV Link for experimental. They are in the hands, in the certified side, the STC certified uh, versions are, they've been with the FAA for certification. We're expecting those around the turn of the year and hope to be shipping AV Link, STC, and AV Mag um, you know, early Q1, call it January, maybe February, depending upon if there's any unforeseen delays. But uh, we were hoping we would have it before the end of the year. But typically, if you know, if if you don't get it by about this time, you know, Thanksgiving time, you don't get a whole lot of certifications the rest of the year. Though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so. I I can have. I can remember and I can imagine. <laughs> so, so what is next for you, Avionics? Yeah, so right now what we're working on is, uh, you know, we, we're trying to finish up. I mean, a lot of development did kind of slow down. I mean, we kept things moving. Um, we're doing a lot of things in the unmanned side. We have dedicated engineers for the unmanned or the uncrewed side. Um, you know, we're a company that's kind of built on, you know, the general aviation. We're built on the unmanned aviation platform. And then we've got other segments that a lot of people don't even know um, or, or that we exist in. And so we do an infrastructure where we do ADSB ground stations um, and vehicle tracking um, for, for instance, uh, um, runway incursions, uh, snow removal, so those ground operation vehicles can have ADSB tracking, so inbound aircraft um, can see those things. There was actually kind of a, a, a terrible accident um, in Australia that recently happened. Um, actually, I'm sorry, not Australia, in Peru, you know, and so, you know, having some of those ADSB vehicles um, that are visible, uh, you know, there's a huge safety factor in there. So we're in that infrastructure market and then we're also in the defense. Um, you know, just in the past couple of years, we've kind of dug into the, the defense in the military market with um, kind of mode five, um, you, you know, mode five and IFFs and, and kind of uh, call it friend or foe, um, you know, uh, transponders, you know. And so it's been really exciting. Um, but in the GA side, you know, we're, we're kind of spooling back up the development side. Um, we've been working on uh, AV Bridge, which is the IFR HSI um, component. So that will allow the AV30 to connect to essentially like an Air Inc. 429 source and we'll have that full IFR HSI capability. Um, that's kind of first of the list, um, kind of in conjunction with AV Bridge, I'm sorry, AV Apex, which is um, the um, autopilot. Uh, so basically, we've got digital autopilots that are working with the AV30s right now. Um, it works with the True Tracks, the Trios, the the Bendix King Aero Crews, but the legacy autopilots like the S Tex and so forth like that. Um, that is where AV Apex, um, it's kind of formerly called APA Mini. Um, and so we've kind of named it and uh, working on the development for that and getting it certified. So you'll see that here this next year. Those are certification efforts that will take a little bit of time. Um, and then we've got a whole slew because, listen, you know, Jeff, we've, you know, we've built a very large general aviation market and business, um, and we're, we're here to stay. I mean, we've, as I just mentioned, we're kind of built for these different segments, um, and, and we're built for the long haul. And so we, you know, each one of these is now kind of defining its own kind of vertical or, or silo. And so, you know, it's building each business now. And, 
So in the GA market, you know, we've got a lot of desire and a lot of, you know, um, a lot of things on the, on the burner to do. For instance, we're looking at, you know, comm radios, GPS navigators, you know, um, looking at, there's a lot of three inch holes in that panel, Jeff. And, and, you know, <laughs> you know, hey, sign me up for radio. I love the idea that you'd be taking the same technology <laughs> that you've yeah. done to miniaturize this and miniaturize a radio out of that. That'd be amazing. Well, it's funny. I mean, I, this is not one, but just to kind of tell you, I mean, you've seen these units, but you know, this right here, I mean, you can see this is my finger. That right there is a full 250 watt transponder. <laughs> and so think about, you know, think about modular event, you know, where if you have something like that, that's a modular or something like that, that pulls into AV30 or various things. I mean, that, that you know, it, it's kind of the, the world is our playground at this time. And, and our, our, our owner kind of calls it a lot of times. It's we're really starting to get to the point where we can really kind of flex the muscle of it, it's the art of possible, you know, uh -huh. you, you know we own essentially the miniaturization world and it's like what can we do next and so that's where we're going we've done a lot of surveys and talking with pilots in the community and saying hey what what do you see next and so we're you know you'll see a lot of these holes i mean we've taken the outside of the plane and and really kind of you know addressed nav lights addressed adsb transponders um and then you know who knows autopilots and everything in there that's i mean just use your imagination on the inside of it uh, and it's on our list of things to do now i will say jeff we're we've got you know we're probably a couple decades behind some of the couple other companies but if you look at what we've done in the last you know five to seven years look out <laughs> that's a that's a great way to leave it and uh, i'll tell you there's gonna be a lot of aircraft or i can imagine over the next decade getting a lot of useful load back, but through miniaturization, yanking a lot of stuff out and putting in your products. So uh, Shane, thank you so much for joining us here on Social Flight Live tonight. It has been a pleasure. I am grateful for uh, the products, for how you support general aviation, and of course, for everything you do here for Social Flight. Jeff, thank you so much for having me. A pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Good night. You too. Thank you. And to all of you, thank you so much again for taking time out of your evening to join us here on Social Flight Live. We'll be back next Tuesday, November 29th at 8 p.m. for a show you definitely do not want to miss, A Night of Bad Decisions with Brian Schiff. This is definitely going to be a lot of fun and also a very good learning experience with Captain Schiff. Uh, I am really looking forward to that. On Tuesday, December 6th at 8 p.m., Congressman Sam Graves, the ranking member of the House Transportation Committee, will be here on Social Flight Live talking about general aviation and the future of what it means to all of us in aviation with so many things coming and change within uh, and supported by the United States government. Until next time, thank you all again, and I wish you all blue skies.